10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Mac. Today is July 20th, and uh, we've got a chalk pack full episode for you all to enjoy today with a whole lot of um, contentious slash issues up for debate. So let's get started. Um, the first thing is here we had this post from Dave at midnight Eastern time. So he says, hey, everyone, um, hope everyone's day is going to going awesome. Um, as our wonderful community has grown in here over many years, five plus even, the Discord has blossomed into a pretty bloody good community and a place to hang out. During that time, we've kept fairly light touch in regards to moderation, with the exception of scammers. Shout out to those who report these to us in report scams. Also, big thanks to the relentless Cron, our unstoppable, indomitable main mod as well. To help keep this as awesome a community as it grows even more, we've updated our Discord rules and um, we'll be a lot more on top of them in the future. Scammers are ever prevalent in crypto discords so we've added a few more do not items to the rules just to come up some of the basics for new users that join please give them a good read in our rules channel much love rocket pool so dave's put this post out and then here there is an updated uh, update to the rules so um, he says welcome to the rocket pool discord we've got a fantastic community that's grown over the last five years with our growth we want to maintain the positive supportive and great vibe that has helped us um, make this Discord a pleasant experience for um, all over that time. So please adhere to Discord rules below. So use the code of content conduct. Number one, be excellent to each other. Um, Ethereum is complex, so it's rocket pool. Always beginners, people just getting started. Be kind to them, everyone else, including the team. We are also human. Two, be respectful to each other, um, to each other's thoughts and opinions. Um, three, be aware that price and trading, talk about tokens or markets, um, belong in the trading in trading thread um, post outside of this channel um, about that topic will be kindly removed unless of course you're talking about it in uh, moon moon's thread be thoughtful with your content and avoid low effort posts um, then says be aware uh, bantering and off-topic chat are permitted to the extent that they build community but they should not override the goal of supporting users it's important to know each other in the community and that includes chatting be aware that promoting shilling or pumping are severely frowned upon and is an instant bannable offense um, sharing guides or videos that you've created yourself is a wonderf is wonderful though thanks dave um if it benefits the community and are extremely welcomed so i'll let people know that especially you butter <laughs> Um, this is be aware making or using existing multiple accounts for this discord server is not allowed and is an instant bannable offense a single user posing as several dilutes important discussions and outcomes we want to make sure all voices are represented fairly via a single account that's really interesting um, be aware that if you feel you may have found an issue with the protocol please follow the proper disclosure guide guidance guidelines um ask a team member first and we'll um, triage it for you then direct you to our bug bounty program where you can get paid for finding it if it's valid uh, posting the issue in public or private channel before the above steps will result in an instant bannable offense and be aware users joining that have the same name avatar as team members or community figures will be instantly banned be aware that um uh, be aware scammers are prevalent and while we do our best to minimize them we'll also be on guard we will never do a token airdrop or anything relating to one if you're suspicious or certain you've come across a scam attempt please report it to our report scams channel do not do not answer dms from strangers or people posing as support we will never dm dm you directly please post in our public support channel if you need assistance and keep it in there um there's very few uh, reasons why you would DM someone from support. Um, be very, very careful when you do it. Um, that's what I'll say about that. Do not give your seed phrase, private key, or anything related to those to anyone in this Discord under any circumstances. Um, I think Patches asked for that from someone the other day, actually, <laughs> because he was building a Flash bot um, bundle for the person. I think that's what happened. I'm not sure if Patches, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And it says, do not click on links without extreme caution. We do not prohibit the posting of links, but do recommend exercising extreme caution if you wish to follow on. So I send POAC links all the time. So sorry, guys. Um, 
yeah <laughs> and then um this speaking of pop-up links um there's this little image at the bottom saying our discord rule book uh rocket pool um that does look very much like a pop-up to me if i had to say that um yeah uh, so maybe th maybe there might be a pop-up um sent out for these at some point in the coming days i have no idea what you'd have to do to be eligible maybe like you know you get pop up if you broke the rules <laughs> but yeah um let's move on from that so thanks dave for sharing the new rules um and next we have this interesting little tease from kane so he shared this little um little bit of little bit of code here that you can't really see um let me actually open it you can't still see it um it says um not to use in production this contract only exists as test feature functionality that may or not be included in future rocket pool release and there's a contract uh rocket no deposit leb4 is rocket base rocket no deposit interference and then there's like code stuff so um rocket no deposit leb4 so here kane is kind of teasing leb4s um i guess you know the team is already kind of um, working on that um tentatively um it's not there's nothing official there's nothing out about it but um it hopefully means that it'll come at some point soon um and this is that note kills the alpha and can says crop it out <laughs> um so yeah that is that's a pretty nice little tease from kane there which is pretty cool um let's move on from there as well to some news that um, joe shared so you know for a couple of days we've been wait waiting for smart node version 1.10.0 so Joe uh, shared this update in the trading overnight saying had some discussion had a discussion version 1.10 is going to wait until Monday for release for two reasons one is some pull requests have merged are being problematic and I need to debug them and two we want at least one more interval to go by and pray to, to make sure rolling and stateless reports are identical before putting it out there so it looks like they're going to be working on it for another couple of days um and it'll be out on Sunday night, Monday morning, US time, most likely, I think. But um, that makes sense, right? Like, they just want to make sure that everything's working properly before you ship the code. Of course, the last thing you want is to ship bad code and might cause some issues later on. But um, I think it's better to wait a few days and get something that is um, as sound as possible um, instead of rushing it and making any kind of mistakes with that. So thanks, Joe, for the update. Okay, next we're going to be talking about the tokenomics update. Um, sorry the rpl staking tokenomics changes that you know i've talked about a couple of times in rocket fuel already so um here um techno capo uh no tech capo says you know good morning i just learned about this can someone give me a tldr um on the proposed unstaking rules can i unstake below 150 percent can i unstake at any level skimmed the ping message didn't find the answer so here pieta gives an update about um like a tldr kind of of what the proposal is he says the proposal is mainly about changing the rpl reward curve so that 10 to 15 percent collateral earns linear rewards while above that has diminishing returns secondary unstaking would allow uh, be allowed above 15 percent not to lock people who are higher collateral while reducing their rewards without exiting mini pools so um that is like a very 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 high level um quick summary of what the proposals are um you know the idea is that this will uh, make rocket pool um staking rewards uh, comparable to other services that are coming out and i can really give a boost to um staking rewards for people who are entering at the lower collateral rev levels however it will have the impact of reducing the rewards um for people who are high collateral levels so um that's kind of where the discussion started um today we had the first i want to say the first um kind of rebuttal to this um uh, from evan here um evan says okay here goes well he posted a few days ago saying valdorf and Noshua are proposing a change to rpl's tokenomics and i'll be making a thread with my thoughts stay tuned so here he says okay here it goes rpl tokenomics proposal my reactions this will be a strongly worded um, and I apologize, but this proposal needs to be shut down. TLDR, this proposal should be dead in the water and is destructive to RPL and by extension the community. Let's discuss a thread. 
So Evan goes on to say, RPL is correctly valued as an asset based on how much RPL is required to be purchased by node operators to mint more RETH. Um, this can be determined numerically as I've done so by manipulating Dr. Worm's code um, at this Dune dashboard here. And there's a link to the Dune dashboard that I shared on Rocket Fuel a couple of months ago, I think, where he um, charted incremental demand for RPL. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, it was as a ratio of... Um, our ETH minted versus um, RPL staked or something along those kind of numbers. Um, go back and watch the episode um, if, you, if you're if you curious about the methodology that Evan used here. But basically it shows that the incremental demand for RPL has kind of come down over time. He says, I want to emphasize this is not my opinion. This is how the mechanics of demands for RPL work. It's just math. Anyone who says, well, that's just your opinion, man, is wrong. This proposal will drastically reduce the incentives for staking RPL for the following node operators. For 16 ETH mini pool node operators, if you have 15 ETH worth of RPL staked, your RPL rewards will get cut by 50%. 24 ETH worth of RPL staked, your RPL rewards will get cut by 66%. For LEB 8 mini pools, rewards remain roughly the same, with a slight increase if you have less than 12 ETH worth of RPL staked on your node. Node operators are able to unstake RPL and sell on the open market at any collateralization ratio above 15%. This proposal will incentivize selling RPL and it will hurt the ratio. While there is a valid argument to be made that Rocket Pool could have been developed without a token, the reality is that the protocol was designed with a token, water on the bridge at this point. Rocket Pool as a protocol is a two-sided market. It must attract both node operators and liquid staking depositors. Key point to understand here. Node operators are required to put up a significant bond, 30% as a minimum for LEB8s, um, in RPL. As a result, in order to attract node operators, RPL um, as an asset must have a premium against ETH and for the protocol to grow. Um, node operators returns are highly sensitive to the RPL ETH ratio. If node operators cannot break even staking through Rocket Pool, the protocol will be unable to attract more node operators and the protocol will not grow. Full stop. To demonstrate how sensitive node operators returns are to the RPL ETH ratio, I made a few interactive charts with sliders and Mathematica. Here's a code to here's a link to the code if you want to convert it to Python. You can use uh, ChatGPT or any LLM of choice. Um, See, so says some assumptions. I assume the ETH uh, staking yield starts off at 4% and linearly drops down to 2% over the next five years and remains at 2% terminally. For the, peer, for the price of RPL, I've input an RPL performance multiple um, and a time frame over which that occurs. Keep it simple, this is linear. Um, that is, the user can adjust with sliders and the graph will update in real time. Results, RPL is down 33% since Atlas. For a node operator oh, which staked an LEB8 node on April 18th, when Atlas went live, it takes 1.5 years to break even and 3.54 years to beat solo staking, assuming RPL's ratio stays flat from where it is today, orange is solo staking. Um, those numbers are exacerbated further if the Rocket Pool op node operator is above the 30% minimum for uh, LEB8s. I also do not account for the fact that node operator which dropped below 30% collateral stopped receiving rewards, yikes, which would exacerbate this much further. Rocket Pool as a protocol cannot ask node operators to operate at a loss for that period of time and expect it to grow. Waldorf and Noshua's proposal will hurt existing node operators in a significant way and they'll be operating at a loss for years. And not on the proposal itself. Unfortunately, it's poorly written. Any proposed change to the top economics should include a risk analysis like the one that I performed above. The fact that no risk analysis was performed at all is a grievous submission. If you resonate with my thoughts above and have delegated your up staked RPL to Valdorf and Noshua, I would strongly encourage you to delegate your stake away from them and vote in any potential future proposals based on your own thoughts. I want to emphasize this is a discussion phase, so there is no need to panic. Just respectfully signal that you do not support this change. That's all. And then here, one of the users says, I agree with your analysis, but I also agree with their argument that yield on staked RPL above 10% is not aligned with the protocol's goal to create more RETH. And Evan says, Rocket Pool's goals are to help decentralize Ethereum, and if RPL's tokenomics make being Rocket Pool node operator unprofitable, then minting more RETH won't happen, unfortunately. Okay, so then there was a response from Valdorf here in the um, Discord, in the thread, where he says, I'm not sure I track your model for correct pricing. And does it use a current market instead of expected market? The main input seems to be minimum RPL required, which isn't changing. Is that right? I'm sure um, what 
I'm not sure what point you're trying to make with the break-even plots. Yes, it takes longer to break even if RPL drops in price. I'm not sure how that relates to the proposal. The core point about the proposal seems to be this proposal will incentivize selling RPL and it will hurt the ratio. The thread doesn't provide evidence of that, but simply assumes it. And then um, the discussion kind of um, carries on. Um, where he like Kauzau says, I appreciate the discussion around the risk and the ratio sensitivity for node operators, but surely you must also agree that something must change. The current mechanisms of RPL are unsustainable. I am one of the node operators who joined around May and April, around the peak, so I agree fully how important the RPL ETH ratio is, but I don't see how it gets better from here with inaction. I at least respect the efforts of those trying to find a solution. Um, and then... Um, and then there's like other, um, Valdorf goes on to say, um, I'm not sure what you mean by risk analysis, given that your thread asserted a contained one. Uh, regarding November, then there was stuff about November with the PETH and then ETH vote about insults and stuff. So I don't want to get into that drama stuff. But like, if you are curious into like picking up this conversation, definitely pop into the Discord thread and, uh, you know, just weigh in and ask questions. Like, I was talking to Ken earlier and I was talking about how I kind of got left behind in this thread and how there's just so many posts and that's kind of overwhelming to like go back in there and, and try to catch up. So um, I just didn't. <laughs> but um, today I kind of like got pulled back in because of some of this like, um, what happened is like a few days ago, um, Val made a comment about how, you know, he's waiting for certain people who've signaled that they want to kind of like write a rebuttal or write the reason why the tokenomics should stay the way that they are right now. One of those was Evan, another one was Zero, you know, who wrote the RP um, investment thesis. Um, and there was a third person who I forgot, but um, like the fact that, you know, um, Evan wrote this thread kind of like pulled me back in here. And since then, I've, I've kind of been following along a little bit, but... Um, I don't think I'll be able to follow along too much because it's just there's an overwhelming number of posts in here, like literally thousands upon thousands of posts. Um, it's a very, very, very um, um, active discussion. So pop in there, like try to catch up, ask questions. I'm sure people will be happy to answer them for you, but please get involved in this whole process because um, there's a lot at stake here, right? Like literally <laughs> a lot at stake here. So um, definitely keep that in mind um, for... Um, I'm going forward with this. Okay. Um, next, we had a new proposal from uh, Val, or new, um, like some new ideas from Val about funding development and the rocket scientists. So um, he says, I'm making a forum thread on this tomorrow, but um, making a quick thread here if anyone, if people want to chime in. Um, team rough outline is yearly team and PDAO uh, communicate about the roadmap plus budget. Team finalizes roadmap. Uh, PDAO finalizes budget. Team accepts budget or not. We go to vote. And then quarterly, the payments will be given out quarterly. The team must pr um, post the roadmap update, e.g. medium post to get paid. They may or may not um, talk with uh, more with the PDAO about tweaks, etc. And then for the rocket scientists, um, saying the rough outline saying pay through the order directly select rust every six months and budget two gmc grants only very rough on this one so um patches comes in and he says to be honest defund the rocket scientists so yeah the gmc's grants only uh, we need to adjust the splitter so ken isn't running the node at a loss to be honest so maybe just pay 100 percent of the nodes rewards to ken rocket scientists who deserve grants should be on level playing field with the rest of the community no built-in pay basically i think the rocket scientist should be a discord role and i guess um so long as we have an odo seat a vote as well um so I said that I like Patches' idea a lot. Uh, put it all on the GMC. Let each rocket, sci the rocket um, scientist member make their case to the GMC. Um, and Patches says, let members of the community propose retroactive awards for rocket scientists who deserve a bonus or whatever. I dislike the regular pay. I don't know what I'm supposed to be using it for. And I feel guilty receiving it when I'm not contributing as actively, which happens. Um, and then... Um, Noshua kind of like uh, started making some comments. Um, so there's a discussion that's going on over here. But the main thing that I wanted to get to was here Dave um, responded to Valdorf's uh, initial post saying, when we first discussed this during the ODAO draft charter, we proposed a yearly pay payment so we could still operate relatively independently as we do now. If we were to report to the GMC every three months for payment, we are working for the GMC and not the protocol at this point. They're still a pseudo or non-board. Um, also, which is one of the other reasons, this was one of the main points we raised about reducing our income from 
the ODAO and have it transition to the GMC. I think you meant to say PDAO here. Uh, Valdov says, I may be failing to communicate here. The quarterly thing I'm picturing is a one or two page. Here's where we're at. No oversight or decisions from the PDAO. Do involve just keep us looped in. Essentially a zoomed out update versus the bi-weekly zoomed in update. Um, and Dave says, no problem with that. That's definitely reasonable. You did write quarterly payments though, which suggests the GMC needs to sign off on those updates for us to receive payments every three months. And Valdo says, my thought was yes, as a formality, yet we got the update, carry on. And then Langa says, is, is it the GMC or the PDAO paying the team? I was under the impression it was the PDAO, not the GMC. And then Nosho says, it says PDAO in the thing we voted on. And Valdo says, definitely PDAO. And Dave says, didn't uh, we say the funding was going to the GMC who confront any team they want, including ours? That was my understanding. The protocol should be team agnostic. And then Patches says, we agree to keep the GMC out of the loop. As I recall, the PDAO paying the team the PDAO paying the team directly and then Valve says the PDAO can fund any team they wish but the PDAO can use its treasury to fund as it sees fit is what Patches says and then Valve says there's nothing specific to you all other than the years of experience and Patches says obviously this works best once Kane is done with the PDAO governance because then everything would be on chain and then Nosho says the initial three months funding is direct PDAO spend that was also introduced with this vote GMC budget budget was not increased that account for an increased responsibility and then uh, Dave says this per side where the funds come from for a moment my main point of concern is receiving funding every three months based on X even if it's just checking a box for now there's no guarantee it'll be that way in the future for us it's also uh, not great for job security with our only source of income being needed to be approved every three months the yearly payment allows us to keep operating basically at the same freedom and security we do now we i could understand three months for a new team but we're definitely beyond that and then patches says three months does feel a little cumbersome to me also honestly um Nashua says, I like the update every three months. PDAO need to sign off just based on receiving the update does very little and i can see how that would be concerning for the team um and then uh, Waldorf says you're suggesting leaving in the quarterly update but making the payment a year um and um, Patches says, I'm not, not sure, but I have no real qualms with that. We may want some language around the maximum time before the pay interval ends, which will, in which we'll plan to renew. So then the discussion kind of goes on. Um, and Dave says a quarter for a roadmap update is fair. And essentially we do that on a rolling basis now. Payments though should be long term, such as year um for all the reasons i mentioned above so it's really interesting that you can see like the nitty-gritty of like these uh, conversations taking place and it's all out in the open which is really awesome to see um but it gives you a little bit of an idea of like some of the dynamics that have changed now with the odao's um pay coming down and in response to that um how the team you know instead of having four odao nodes that are paying them you know a significant amount of money every month instead they'll be getting uh, money from the PDAO um, to fund their development so it really changes the dynamic dynamics of um, how the funding happens and where the team's money comes from and I think that's really cool that you know all these discussions are taking place out in the open and I really like that um, you know it's it, the, the uh, people are making headway with these discussions so that's really cool so for those of you who don't know what's actually happening right now is that the ODA oracle vote has voted to cut its pay from 15 percent to eight percent of our pl inflation for now and 1.5 percent in a year so we talked about this a couple of times about how you know they're giving themselves a 90 percent pay cut over the course of a year so it'll go down by you know 50 percent um already it's gone down by 50 percent and then it'll go down by half a percent every uh, quarter for the for the coming year and then um, here, Rocket Scan says there were three votes that all had to pass at the same time RPIP 23, 24, and 25. And it says 18 out of 18 uh, ODAO members voted for RPIP 24, which is the ODAO charter. There's also a non binding uh, PDAO signaling vote, which was overwhelmingly in favor of that. Um, some highlights from RPIP 24 Oracle DAO charter, you can have a look at that. The ODAO is no longer funding public goods. Um, the ODAO must minimize its role over time and the PDAO may nominate or suggest kicking an ODAO member and ODAO must vote on it. So there's like some shifts in power there as well between the community and the ODAO. Um, and it says at the same time the protocol DAO voted for RPIP uh, 23, the PDAO charter, and um, RPIP 25 inflation uh, allocation and these three RPIPs are interlinked which means that all of them had to pass ODA's vote for RPIP 24 ODA charter was also an indirect vote for RPIP 25 inflation allocation and some highlights from the um, 
protocol DAO charter is the PDAO must prioritize protocol safety. Uh, the PDAO should prioritize the health of the Ethereum network. The PDAO should prioritize decentralization and the PDAO should prioritize permissionlessness. And then um, the votes, you know, there's um, uh, some screenshots from um, a rocket scan here about the, how the votes passed and how many votes were for, how many votes were against. Um, and then um, here we have the RPIP um, inflation and it changes the 5% annual inflation. Um, so previously it was 70% to node operators, sorry, yeah, 70% to node operators, 15% to PDAO, 15% to ODAO. Now it's 70% to node operators, um, PDAO gets 22% and ODAO gets um, 8% and in one year's time, the node operators will get 70%, the PDAO will get 28.5%, the order will get 1.5 percent and then rocket scan goes on to say that the oracle DAO is expected to reduce its duties over time and ossify this rpip suggests limiting order membership to 11 to 15 seats i think the sweet spot will be well they're gonna aim for 15 now with the team potentially reducing their order seats and then um, others after that it says uh, rpip 25 inflation allocation vote results and then there's um, results for the voting there as well and the protocol um, DAO Guardian, which is controlled by the team, which changed the inflation allocation settings. So as you can see there, that um, in the next vote, that will um, that will change. And it says the Rocket Pool has four seats on the DAO. They used to fund the team, pay for audits, etc. However, the ODA will no longer receive, um, no longer is no longer funding public goods. Um, while not explicitly mentioned in RPIP24, ODAO Charter is encouraged for the team to give up three of its four seats because RPIP25 targets 11 to 15 members, but now there are 18 members. So a snapshot vote for RPIP25, inflation allocation was also a vote for modifying the budget. And then you can read the text there. And then it says this is there's now one-time expense. Send um, 3,584 RPL to the Rocket Pool team immediately. Send uh, 3,908 RPL more if they reduce their ODAO seats from a one a four to one within 28 days. And the Oracle DAO is being paid, paid too much was a controversial issue in the community. Originally, ODAO was intended to fund public goods to help support staking community and the fantastic projects that drive it. Our hope is over time, funding contributions from Rocket Pool could be second only to the Athenian Foundation. Um, it's now up to the protocol DAO to fund public goods. Um, all ODA members, including for-profit entities, were paid equally. Um, PDAO can make more fine-grained funding decisions. So um, here there's a question, does this fund our ETH? No, it does not fund our, uh, impact our ETH at all. Um, it says this is great. It gives me confidence in long-term future rocket pool. Um, someone uh, <laughs> called the mall cop <laughs> and then um, ethereum bull says a year sounds like a very long time is in crypto years or in real life years but um yeah the the that's a really nice breakdown of um the the vote that happened and the consequences of it so thank you for that um pateris Okay, next is something interesting that happened today. Uh, it's not happened in a little while. Was there was a person who burned uh, two thousand three hundred and fifty ETH for two thousand five hundred thirty-one ETH. So um, you know they sent back their R ETH and got um, ETH back in return. Um, so they're unstaked from Rocket Pool. Um, however, still even with that, like now the um, now the deposit pool is empty again, and there's one mini pool in the queue. So very much at like that balance point where you know there's um, the deposits and the queues are kind of like matched. Um, so far in July, we've had twenty six thousand um, R ETH uh, deposited, uh, minted. Sorry, and um, well, ETH deposited to mint R ETH. Like if you look at the time before um, Atlas, this would have been you know on track to be the best ever month with two months that had thirty thousand. So you know in within ten days it would it would overtake that. However, you know we kind of got spoiled in the Atlas period. Uh, with you know hundreds of thousands of RPL minted in those three months, um, so it it feels like you know we've come down a lot since then. But um, as you can see, you know last week we had a really good week where we minted fifteen thousand ETH um, worth of our ETH. Um, however, this week's been much slower, and you know we've had um, most days it's just been in the hundreds, um, which which is a bit lower than you know where it's been before. So um, some people 
like there's a lot of negativity in the community and people are like pointing towards the lack of new um, mini pools is one of those things so here you know the staking mini pools 25,960 uh, with um, 3,000 um, with the active being 20,796 and 3,220 pending in the queue um, five are exiting and the total exited is um, 2010 so um, yeah like as you can see over here you know, the mini pool count over time there was a huge period of growth around atlas and like you know for those three months around then and then since then it's kind of plateaued and um, it's a little bit flat so yeah that's definitely something to um, keep your keep your eyes on um but however you know um the protocol st keeps going and here we've got a tweet from the rocket pool smoothie account on twitter who says that you know the new lottery block and 1.8 ETH has come into there so uh the smoothie smoothing pool is coming along um let me see if there is yeah there is here um it's not having the best month sadly um in total we have um 184 ETH in there I think after around 15 days or 16 days something like that so it's um it's, it's you can see that the chart kind of peaked in May and then it's been on a slow downtrend since then kind of bringing it back in line with um the pre um, atlas period for the most part so um yeah um let's move on from here to this proposal from that's been submitted to compound so as you can see here it says uh, add our ETH as collateral to um, wrapped ETH version 3 on mainnet so the proposal is um, you know to the compound community on behalf of the rocket pool community we would like to propose adding our ETH to compound so the person who wrote this um, th this proposal is Grant and those of you who know Grant is like the new um, kind of biz dev person ish um, um, ecosystem development um, so it's nice that you know he's already getting started on this work i think it's the same grant i presume <laughs> uh, this is due to consistent value performance and low risk profile our ETH would be an ideal collateral asset for compound users our ETH has been successfully integrated into our ecosystem and has provided their users with more liquid staking options details here and it's linked to all the obvious stuff about our ETH and this has compound asset listing checklist the token asset name rocket pool eth the rocket pool's team has been staking um since inception in 2016 and then gives information about the team and then benefits to the compound community then it gives resources as well for the and for the protocol and like you know and get um that information this is the proposal author and their contact info so it's grant Hepburn ecosystem lead rocket pool so yep it was the one and same grant um so it says social media metrics you know 43,000 followers on the twitter 20,000 plus members in discord and then uh, it has like information about the market cap of the token where the liquidity is how much liquidity is there um and the total supply of the token and all that kind of stuff there's information here about the ODA as well and like how it works and um yeah it, it just breaks down like you know according to um compounds uh, format for for the token um and you know it's a really detailed report so kevin here is replied by saying hi kevin for starting this discussion i support this proposal i think it's a great idea to start listing more lsts as collateral um in the compound market our reef is one of the largest ST, uh, lsts right now and offers one of the most decentralized validator set in the space supporting our reef as collateral asset on compound will not only create more utility for um the market will also help avoid staking concentration which is becoming a real concern for ethereum right now and this is disclaimer as the time of this post i do not hold any aretha rpl nor am i an ambassador of rocket pool and adam says thank you for your post and beginning this discussion looking forward to insights and feedback from the community and michigan blockchain says we support listing our ethos collateral uh, rocket pool is the third largest liquid staking provider with this market share expanding from initial five percent earlier this year to nearly eight percent in recent times um, given the success of launching our ETH with e mode on RV v3 this integration aligns with the evolving market trends and reinforces our commitment to harnessing top tier technology for compounds compounds user base so there's some really nice positive um comments already so i'm really expecting you know this to um keep making positive moves going forward and um you know it's really nice to see that grant is already putting out some really good work um regarding uh, regarding um um, more uh, integrations and compound of course is one of the biggest integrations you can have along with Aave speaking of Aave you know we've been tracking their rocket pool deposit pool the RPL token deposit pool for the last few days um, and here they have um, 
this update that well the basically their whole pool of 105,000 rpl has been maxed out and um you know it's it's all been uh, supplied so that is full now um, the interesting thing is that 10,700 um rpl is has been borrowed out so the interest rate on that now is 1.09 percent um the borrow cap of course is 105,000 but it's really interesting that the the amount is borrowing it's actually being used so the current utilization rate is 10 percent and as you utilize more and more the interest rate will go higher so you know, as it says you know uh, the 10 percent uh, is around 1.1 percent uh, borrow rate but as that goes up the the interest rate goes up on on a linear fashion so you know if you get to 75 percent that's when it's like seven point sorry seven point eight percent and i think at that point we'll kind of balance out with uh, the rewards on the network so i don't see the utilization rate reaching much more than around um around seven percent um sorry around uh 70 70 to 75 percent i think it's gonna be really interesting to see where that ends up um, and what people are doing with it of course one of the interesting things that can happen is you know you can deposit um any of the rv collateral um, tokens that the acceptance collateral you can borrow rpl against that and then you can potentially use the rpl that you borrow to short to short the market so um that's definitely something that's really interesting that's developed because of this um and it's going to be interesting to see if people utilize um this borrowing feature to short the rpl token um it's in a very precarious situation right now because of the low liquidity range that um you know the token is in so um it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that okay um talking about you know the, the price of the rpl token there was a little bit of a joke here from kane um who you know um Arfil is a, um, a frequent community uh troll who likes to joke around about um the rpl price so he said you know when uh, when will the ratio be 0 0.16 um no 0 0.016 and Kane says i'll buy as much rpl as you have right now at 0 0.016 uh sell me all you want then f off <laughs> so that of course is um um harking back to that uh, sbf tweet where he was telling people that he'd buy their salt tokens at three dollars so it was a nice little joke but um yeah the price the price has really gotten uh you know the community spooked right now negative sentiment is abound i've had a lot of people reaching out to me just for like a little bit of reassurance just for a little bit of reassurance that everything's going to be okay and you know in all honesty like i'm rpl heavy too right in val's words um in fact i'm probably more rpl heavy than the vast majority of the community um and at the moment i'm doing okay <laughs> people have been really kind to ask you know if i'm doing okay so that's really nice but yes i am doing okay thank you for asking and um i think i think we'll be okay um it's just the uh, this period is is has, has been kind of tough for the community and that's that's a bit of a shame but um i'm glad that you know people can keep their sense of humor because it's so important to to keep that there's this really interesting post from akash today saying today marks the end of akash gpu testnet over 1300 participants signaled um signed up sorry to stress test the network across a range of ai deployments and benchmarks the testnet also successfully hosted nvidia gpus um including h100s um, a100s and more everything passed with flying colors so adam here said um, do you think akash will work well for hosting rocket pool mini pools um asking for the ethereum ecosystem that is interested in helping to decentralize validators and um, boss says happy to create a proof of concept which should work uh, let me know if you'd like to dm and chat more and uh, adam says much appreciated there was a little bit more information here as well let me see if i can just find that um Adam went on to say, um, wait, I thought he had some more information. I vaguely remember seeing more of something of like some kind of grant that Akash may be able to provide. Um, if someone wants to like do some work towards um, providing a proof of concept for that as well. But don't quote me on that because I can't find that information right now. But um, yeah, if it's something that you're interested in doing, Akash basically is like a decentralized cloud computing um, platform. And the idea is that, you know, it'll challenge um, AWS and Azure and all those kind of things. Um, they seem to be like working quite well. Um, I don't know much about it because I'm not really following the protocol that much, but um, it might be an alternative for people to run their uh, rocket pool nodes in the cloud um, using Akash instead of using um, AWS or a service like that. 
Okay, um, next we had this uh, post from Merlo saying doing a crypto AMA on Anthony Sasano's The Daily Grade Discord um, on Friday, uh, mainly aimed at Aussie tax taxpayers. Invite link below if you aren't already in the server. So then there's a link to the Daily Grade server, and you know you can you can pop in there and like read the tax AMA. Um, of course, you know it's the tax year end for Australians right now, and um, other people as well like you know if you're curious about any tax advice there then um check out um this thread it's it might be finished by the time you're listening to this but if it isn't then you might be able to ask some questions of merlo and i've known that you know merlo is really responsive to any um, questions that you ask of them so um if you are curious about tax questions in general or specifically you uh, australian based questions then reach out to merlo and uh, maybe they can point you in the right direction um which is really nice Okay, and finally, I'm going to finish the episode with this um, another scam that happened. So, Pateris here says that Uniswap creator Hayden Adams, his um, Twitter was uh, compromised and it's a scam. His account is compromised. Don't go to that link. So, there was um, a tweet here that went out from Hayden Adams saying, Warning Uniswap exploit. Uniswap uh, permit to contract has been affected by an unknown exploit. All your tokens are at risk revoke them now and then there's a link here to like revoke your tokens and of course you know if you go to that website and try to revoke your tokens you will um you will have your wallet drained pretty much um so and this is i'm going to go to that link you can't stop me um and um unknown the nostril says unknown exploits are the worst so um yeah what happened is it's a scam post of course you know just like the rocket pool airdrop post was the other day on on discord um there is no exploit um there is no um there is no way to basically um show that this is this is a this is real uh, so don't interact with these things always be super careful um one thing that i found really funny um and i'm going to finish the episode on this is um this tweet here from um Wawin, uh, who says Hayden's Twitter hacked, and all the dude does is a normie scam tweet. My brethren in Christ, you could have opened a giga long position and said that Uniswap was going to activate the fee sharing mechanism for holders and get dynastic money in five minutes. And then um, Tree of Alpha says, Remember that time some dude had access to the accounts of every major account on Twitter and posted a send one BTC and re receive two scam? Bro could have posted, You'll be able to purchase every Tesla model using Dogecoin starting next week on Elon and made high seven figures, high seven, low seven figs, low eight figs. And um, Warwin says, They really don't understand the power they hold when they gain access to an account. Um, and then uh, Art says a sim swap expert but left curved scammer uh, he didn't even turn off the comment section to let people say scam scam so it's really funny that um how and then this is this person here in the trading act says i've always thought of how uncreative these hackers are going through the lens of hacking large accounts and not manipulating markets or wealth or out thread in advance about some crazy immediate upgrade or whatever they don't understand the power of news so this like i'm if any of you are scammers who are watching this please don't take this advice you know keep posting the um give one get one um give get give one get two scams you know that we've all seen for years now um but this is really interesting because it actually is the honest truth like if you get access to a large enough protocol like uh, uniswap you could literally say you know we're turning on the fee switch and the uniswap price would basically double within minutes uh, you could open you know a 10x long on on so many decentralized platforms will let you do that um, you open that long you send that tweet out and as soon as the tweet is out you know the price jumps you close your long right away you short it people find out that it's the account was hacked you can even say yourself you know ha 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 i hacked your account and then the price dumps and then you profit doubly like it's just they just don't think about it right like it's just it's really strange but um yeah i'm really glad that they they haven't reached that level of sophistication yet but i really like this thread because um <laughs> there's some really smart people in crypto and um i guess you know thankfully they're not scammers because they really could um do some really big exploits with this but anyway, on that note, um, you know, this episode has been a really long one. Um, there's a whole lot happening in the Rocket Pool community. Like every day, regardless of whether the price is up or down, there is stuff happening. You know, I'm putting out these episodes that are just 45 minutes today for you all. Um, 
there's so much happening and that's the thing that is keeping me so bullish about rocket pool um you know because people have asked me right like you know how i'm doing that's the thing that's keeping me grounded in rocket pool right now is um i'm seeing all the development that's happening i'm um i'm so close to seeing all of that and like i know that there's amazing stuff and we're just growing in like a really wonderful way and that's what's keeping me going so um you know not financial advice of course you know you guys all make your own decisions but i've not sold any rpl yet and um i'm not planning on selling it if anything i'm thinking of buying more so on that note um i hope you all have a lovely evening i hope you're not too stressed out about the price and um i'll see you all tomorrow bye